you see it? Yeah. Hi, I'm Maddie, and I believe that everybody anywhere can find amazing wildlife experiences not far from their doorsteps. To prove it, I'm going to two of the world's biggest cities. I'm going to be joined by two budding local experts who are always up for a challenge. Come and join us on our urban jungle adventure. It's going to be awesome. Welcome to London, England. Right now, we are in the heart of the capital and just look at this view. London is absolutely massive. Nine million people live here. But did you know London is also the greenest city in Europe? It's home to both humans and lots of wildlife. And hello from Austin, Texas. Some say this is a city within a park, and it is so true, which is kind of surprising, considering this is one of the fastest growing cities in the USA. In spring, lots of plants and wildlife are waking up after their long winter's rest. Flowers bloom, bees and butterflies start to buzz about, and many animals give birth to their young. For today's adventure, we are on the lookout for all kinds of spring awakenings. Hopefully, we'll see some beautiful blossoms and even some cute baby animals. But to do that, I'm going to need some help. Perfect. Hey, my name's Barrett. I'm 11 years old. I love to climb trees. I love BMX. Two of my favourite animals are wolves and snakes. Hey, my name is Zoe. I am 11 years old and I love to climb trees. I like to be like, oh, that's a woodpecker, like whatever, something like that. I love hearing it. Hi, my name is Therese and I'm 11 years old. My favorite animal is an angelfish. I like drawing, singing and bird watching. Hi, I'm Max. My favorite animal is a Bengal tiger. I'm 10 years old and I love to ride my bike. You heard them. Let's go see what we can find. Our team in Austin starts us off on a mission for a springtime essential, wildflowers. Oh, flowers. If you dip them on your nose, get pollen on your nose. Those are blue bonnets, the, the state flowers. The famous blue bonnet. There aren't very many. We can probably find them at other locations. Do you think so? That looks kind of like a claw. That's called cat's claw. If you were to squeeze it out, that's the pollen. Oh, my goodness. See that little yellow thing? Yeah. Did you know that bees collect pollen on its body? Yeah. They then take that pollen to another flower, and that is when pollination happens, when pollen from one flower travels to another. Then this flower can then make seeds to start growing into new plants. Yeah. So pollination is a super important part of their life cycle. What's really interesting is that the bee doesn't see red very well, and they see something called ultraviolet Violet. light. Now, so some of these flowers may be using ultraviolet to attract the bees. So notice how this bee here, it's visiting the blue bonnets that have bright white spots, and it's kind of ignoring the blue bonnets which have the darker purple spots. They're dying, I believe. They're telling bees they don't have any more pollen. Ooh, yeah, toys five. So the two of you are so right. These bright white spots, they are the newer, fresher flowers, so they've got the better pollen in. It's crazy that they're able to figure this out. I learned so much more about them, so thank you. While the bees are busy doing their work in Austin, over in London, some rare birds are spreading their wings for the very first time. What type of bird do you think might be nesting on a very tall building? Maybe peregrine falcons. Peregrine falcons, exactly. We know that there are a pair of peregrines that have had one chick hatch this year, and uh, that one has been called Indy. 
a nest box has been placed with a camera, which is allowing us to see some amazing footage. It's really cute. Do you think so? Looks like a snowball <laughs> with an eyes and a beak. <laughs> Indy is currently fledging. Isn't it when they grow feathers? Yeah, that's right. They lose those fluffy feathers and they are replaced with flight feathers. That's maybe a month it's gone from that fluffy snowball to that. Wow. And one of the things you've got to do when you're learning to fly is take a brave leap off the edge of your cliff or balcony. When they're trying to catch their prey, yeah. they can go up to 200 miles per hour. 200 miles per hour. That's quicker than most cars on the road can go. Yeah. Our camera crew have set this up on a really super duper long lens so we can get a better look at the birds. Can you see it? Yeah. when lots of birds are leaving the nest. There are people here who are keeping watch of the peregrines to make sure that they're safe, especially when they're going through this part of their life, which is particularly risky. So as long as we have people and wildlife working together, then cities yeah. can be an amazing space for them to grow up. I think it's time to leave the birds and go see something else. Let's see what we can find. Come on, you two. Some animals just never seem to get the love that they deserve. But if we knew a little more about what makes them special, we might find there's so much more to love. This is our moment to celebrate the unloved ones. Oh, pigeons, also known as flying vermin, city chickens, even feathered rats. Not that I think there's anything wrong with rats. Rats are cool. It seems our urban neighbours have got themselves a whole host of names, but are these unloved city chicks actually dirty sky rats? Or are they just misunderstood? Let's hear it for the pigeons. First up, pigeons are brilliant navigators and can find their way back home from over 1,000 kilometres away. In fact, they're so good at wayfinding, they've been used to deliver messages as far back as the Roman Empire. Pigeon post, anyone? But it's not just letters they can carry. Before the times of drones and flying cameras, pigeons were used as spy photographers to take pictures of enemy territories in World War I and II. The bravest of them were even awarded the Dickin Medal to honour their hard work. They're super smart too. Scientists have shown they can learn to recognise real words from fake ones made up of jumbled letters. Not only that, but some pigeons can even spot when certain words have been spelled incorrectly with deliberate mistakes. As well as all that, they're well adapted to living in our big cities, especially the ones with darker feathers. These pigeons have a special way to help clean themselves of dirty air pollution. <coughs> the dark colour in their feathers is thanks to a pigment called melanin. This pigment does a pretty good job of grabbing hold of the toxic metals that are found in city smog and end up in a pigeon's body. This is extremely useful as once a year when the pigeons molt, they lose their feathers along with a whole bunch of toxins and grow back a set of fresh ones. So perhaps pigeons aren't so dumb and dirty after all. Spring flowers are a beautiful sight, but they're also buzzing with curious sounds. Back in London, Cherise knew just where to look and listen. I love this part of the park. Yeah, there are flowers everywhere. Yeah, we are completely surrounded by them. If you were a bee, what would you call this? Beetopia. Beetopia. <laughs> Ooh, can you see there's a guy over there? Ah, what's he doing? Hello. Hi. Hello. What's your name? My name's Toby, hi. What are you doing? I'm trying to record the sounds of insects and invertebrates that might be scurrying around in the undergrowth here. Oh, wow. Let's take a seat. A lot of sounds that insects make, we can't normally hear with our ears. So I've got these special microphones 
that pick up the vibrations of the tiny little feet of ants and wood lice and things like that. You're able to pick up the sound of little ant yeah, footsteps. Yeah, shall we see if we can hear some? Yes, Let's definitely. Try. Do you want to go? Yeah. yeah. Okay, why don't you put these headphones on? Okay. Press the microphone towards the ground. Do you know what that might be? Can you hear something? Wait. What are you doing? It sounds like a beetle. Yeah. A beetle? Little tiny feet? Mm -hmm. That's, it's interesting, that was a beetle, so their noise they make is a little bit deeper. The vibrations are just a bit heavier than the ants, which are quite light. We might be able to hear some grasshoppers if we go into the long grass over there. Let's see, if I put the microphone in here, you never know. I might be able to pick one up. It's kind of tingly on the air. doing karaoke for bees. OK, I'm coming down. Wait, 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 wait. Ready? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Bees like the colour purple because they can see it well. They can't see it red. It doesn't really show in their eye. Yeah, that's right. It's outside of the colour spectrum, which is why they are buzzing about these flowers. I was just in Austin, and I think the ones here are just a little bit fuzzier. So I think these ones might be my favourites. Anyway, thank you so much, Toby. Nice to meet you. Have yeah, fun. Yeah, you too. Thank you so much. For today's mini challenge, we've used some common household items to create flowers for our teams to pollinate. Welcome to the pollinator playing field. You might have noticed that we have hidden some flowers around. You are pollinators, a beautiful butterfly and a ladybug. And these are your tongues or your proboscis, if you like. And you're going to use your straws or your tongues to slurp up the nectar inside the flower. We want you to try and figure out what flavour that flower is. It's actually juice, and you just need to try and keep those flavours in your head and tell me them at the end. Do you think you're ready for that? Yes. Pollinate! He's heading straight for the pink flower. OK, he's going to the first one. Did you see her face? <laughs> well done, Max. Come on. Go, Max. Go, Max. Go on, Barry. <laughs> well done, Sharice. Well done. You definitely pollinated the flowers very well. What did you taste? I tasted apple, carrot and orange. Apple. Mm-hmm. Apple. Grapefruit. Mm-hmm. Orange, mango. And there were two others. Do you remember what you, were, what you might have tasted? What do you Grapefruit. think? Grapefruit. Yes. Kiwi. OK, so those are your guesses. So you both did really well. You both guessed three of the flavours correctly. So you got all five flavours. Team London, you won the tasting part of the game! Yeah! on your face, you two. What's that? Is that a, is that a bit of pollen? <laughs> <laughs> we had loads of fun designing and playing our pollinator mini challenge, so why don't you give it a go at home? You don't have to use exactly the same stuff as us either. Just use whatever you have lying about at home. It's a great way to learn about pollination. Back in London, Sharice and Max are on the lookout for some of the largest mammals in the UK, who just happened to call Richmond Park home. There's something over here. What have you got? It seems to be a deer dung. Deer dung. But actually, there are two types of deer here in Richmond Park. We have fallow deer and red deer. The red deer are the biggest mammals that we have in England. Nice. Do you want to get in close with it? I think it's quite old. Yeah? What's telling you that? Because it's quite dry. So maybe the deer might have passed through, but not recently. Yeah. We should keep looking then, shouldn't we? Yeah. Wow, I found chestnut shells. Chestnut shells? These are sweet chestnuts, some of the deer's favourite food. 
And luckily for us, they've left some on the ground that they didn't quite gobble up. It smells kind of sweet. All of the empty casings definitely tell us that they've come through. Hang on a moment. Do you see what I see? Yeah. yeah. And is it different? Yeah, much shinier. Shinier, which means... It's new. So it might be closer. Droppings are still small, though, aren't they? So what type of deer do you think they come from? A fallow deer. A fallow deer. Wait, we found them! That should be a fallow deer because it's light brown and it has white underneath and white spots. That's cute. Nice, Shree. I think it's looking at us. Yeah. It's you think it is? See, it's, it's definitely seeing us. Nice one. Good spot. First deer of the day. Should we go see if we can find some of the red deer as well? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Let's go this way. Look at that. And what type of deer are they? Red deer. Yeah, absolutely. They are gorgeous. I think he's just watching us and guarding maybe his babies. It does look like it's on guard a little bit, doesn't yeah. it? When the deer are first born, they are able to move, but the parents will hide them in the long grasses to keep them safe. So it's very possible that there are actually some fawns, some baby deer in those long grasses, which is why it's important that we keep her quite far away. If you were to look around at all of the trees, is there anything you notice about the shape of them? They're all, like, neatly cut. Oh, yeah. Can you see that? Yeah, maybe because of the deer eating the leaves. Yes! We actually call this a browse line. It's about one and a half metres from the ground to the leaves, and that's because all of the deer here are going around nibbling the leaves, and that's as high as they can get. And that's what gives Richmond Park its own characteristic, its own special look. Spring migrations have brought some new residents to central Austin, and Zoe knows exactly where to find them. Does it look bats? They are all Mexican free-tail bats. They are so protected up in those cracks, aren't they? Yeah. They come all the way here from Mexico to have their babies. It's good weather and it's a good home, right? Like, nothing can really get them in those small little cracks and it's a good place to raise their pups. Do you think we should stick around and see them fly out from under the bridge? Yes. Yeah. Yes? So whilst we wait for it to get a little bit darker because that's when the yes. bats are going to start flying. Batman! <laughs> Thinking we should go on a boat safari first. Go see what wildlife we can find along the river. Oh my god, look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whoa. Oh, oh, there they go. Unicorns. You see those nests? Yeah. You see them up there? Yeah. The mud oh. swallows. Yes. So those nests are made out of Stop. dirt, yeah. mud. It's going to be amazing to watch the bats later. It's getting dusky now, so it shouldn't be too long. <laughs> get under the bridge and use yeah. our own red light. Yes. It is so busy! Oh, did you see it? Yeah. Whoa, look at those guys. Whoa! Oh, oh my god! They're all coming there at There is it. so many. This colony in particular happens to be the largest urban colony of bats in the world. You see movies a lot, they're like in caves, but here they are under yeah. a bridge. This is where they choose to come and have their babies of all places. Yeah. Thank you so much for showing me around Austin. We've seen some amazing things. Bats, blue bonnets, and all sorts of other things along the way. Some amazing spring awakenings, thanks. Both our teams did incredibly well, and we found some awesome wildlife in both cities. Why don't you get outside with your friends and family and see what you can find? Maybe you'll even see some baby animals or beautiful flowers in bloom. I have three cats, ten fish, and one tortoise. Have you got pollen on your I've nose? Got I've got a flower. Please remember to always treat wildlife with kindness and respect and join us on our next adventure. Stay curious and subscribe for more videos just like this.